Chapter One: The Discovery in the Woods. Lilla's day started like any other in the quiet village of Thornwood. She helped her mother with the morning chores, feeding the chickens and collecting eggs. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, Lilla's thoughts wandered to the woods that lay just beyond the village's borders. Mother, may I go exploring in the woods today? She asked, her eyes shining with anticipation. Her mother, a kind, round-faced woman, hesitated for a moment before nodding. Be careful, Lila, and make sure you're back before sundown. With a grateful smile, Lila grabbed a small satchel and raced off towards the woods. As she ventured deeper into the forest, the sunlight filtered through the canopy of leaves above, casting dappled shadows on the mossy ground. The woods were a place of wonder for Leela, where her imagination could run wild. As she walked, she noticed a faint, shimmering light coming from a small clearing up ahead. Curiosity piqued, Leela cautiously approached the source of the light. There, nestled among the roots of an ancient oak tree, lay a mysterious artifact. It was a small, intricately carved silver pendant in the shape of a dragon with sparkling emerald eyes. Leela reached out and picked up the pendant, feeling a strange warmth radiating from it. As she held it, she could sense a faint, pulsing energy coursing through her veins. She knew somehow that this artifact was magical. Hello there! said a voice behind her, making Leela jump. She turned to see a squirrel perched on a low-hanging branch, looking at her with unusual interest. To her astonishment, she understood the squirrel's chittering speech. You can talk? Leela stammered, clutching the pendant tightly. Of course I can, replied the squirrel, twitching its bushy tail. And so can you, it seems. That pendant you're holding is no ordinary trinket. It has the power to communicate with animals. Leela stared at the artifact, her eyes wide with wonder. But how is that possible? She asked. The squirrel shrugged. I'm not sure, but I've heard whispers in the forest about an enchanted heirloom with the power to bridge the gap between humans and animals. You should be careful with that kind of power, though. There are many who would do anything to possess it. As Leela made her way back to the village, she couldn't help but think about the squirrel's words. She knew she had stumbled upon something extraordinary, but she couldn't have known just how significant the artifact would become in the days to come. For now, she tucked the pendant safely into her satchel, eager to learn more about its magic and the strange world she had just discovered. Chapter 2 The Wise Wizard's Guidance a few days after her discovery, Leela found herself once again exploring the woods. She had spent every spare moment trying to learn more about the artifact, practicing her newfound ability to communicate with animals. She had talked with birds, rabbits, and even a wise old fox. Yet, she couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the pendant than just the power to speak with animals. As she walked, deep in thought, Leela didn't notice the tall, cloaked figure approaching her from behind. Greetings, young one, said a deep, kindly voice, causing Leela to jump. Spinning around, Leela found herself face to face with an elderly man. His long white beard and piercing blue eyes seemed to hold the wisdom of ages. Who are you? She stammered, clutching the pendant protectively. The old man smiled warmly. My name is Merlin, and I am a wizard. I have been watching you these past few days, Leela. 
I see that you have discovered the power of the enchanted heirloom. Leela hesitated before nodding. Yes, but there's so much I don't understand. Why was it hidden in the woods? What is its true purpose? Merlin's eyes twinkled as he looked at Leela. That pendant is an ancient artifact, connected to a great destiny. It was created by a powerful sorceress to aid the one who is meant to bring balance and unity to this land. That person is a young boy named Arthur. Lila's eyes widened. Arthur? But how am I involved in all of this? Merlin leaned on his staff, his gaze thoughtful. You have a magical heritage, Lila. Your ancestors were skilled enchanters, guardians of the heirloom. It seems that fate has chosen you to play a role in Arthur's journey. The pendant will help you guide and protect him on his path to becoming king. Leela looked down at the pendant, her heart racing. I don't know if I'm ready for such responsibility. Merlin placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. You have a kind heart and a strong spirit, Leela. Trust in yourself and the magic within you. Your path will become clear in time. Over the next few weeks, Leela continued to learn from Merlin, who taught her not only about the pendant's powers, but also about her magical lineage. As she grew more confident in her abilities, Leela knew that she would be ready to face the challenges that lay ahead. The day would soon come when she would be called upon to help Arthur fulfill his destiny, and she was determined to be prepared. Chapter 3 Lord Agravain's Scheme Unbeknownst to Leela and Merlin, word of the powerful enchanted heirloom had spread to the ears of a cunning and ambitious noble Lord Agravain. Sitting in his dark study, he brooded over the tales he'd heard of a young girl with a mysterious pendant and the wizard who had taken her under his wing. Agravain was power-hungry and had always been searching for a way to claim the throne for himself. If he could seize the heirloom and control its magic, he believed he could achieve his desires. With a sinister smile, Lord Agravain summoned his most trusted henchmen. I have an important task for you, he told them, his voice dripping with malice. There is a girl in a nearby village who possesses a pendant of extraordinary power. I want you to retrieve it for me by any means necessary. The henchmen nodded, eager to do their master's bidding, and set off towards Lilla's village, leaving a trail of fear in their wake. Back in the village, Lila was practicing her magical abilities under Merlin's watchful gaze. Birds fluttered around her, and she listened intently to their songs, focusing on her newfound gift of understanding their language. Suddenly, a sparrow swooped down, its eyes filled with panic. Danger! It cried. Danger approaches the village! Leela and Merlin exchanged worried glances, and Merlin's eyes darkened. It seems we have drawn unwanted attention. We must prepare ourselves for whatever threat lies ahead. As the henchmen arrived at the village, the villagers cowered in fear, sensing the ill intent behind their presence. The henchmen demanded to know where Leela was, and it wasn't long before they found her, standing resolutely beside Merlin, a pendant glowing brightly around her neck. You will hand over the pendant, girl! Snarled the lead henchman, his eyes locked on the magical artifact. Our master, Lord Agravain, desires it, and he always gets what he wants. Lilla's heart pounded in her chest, but she stood her ground, her eyes blazing with determination. I will not give up the heirloom. She declared, her voice steady despite her fear. 
It is my responsibility to protect it and ensure it is used for good, not for the selfish ambitions of your master. The henchmen sneered and prepared to seize the pendant by force, but they had underestimated the strength of Lilla's magic and her unyielding spirit. With Merlin by her side, she was ready to face the challenges that lay ahead and defend her village from the impending peril. Chapter 4 Loyalty and Peril As Leela and Merlin prepared to confront the henchmen, the villagers huddled together, whispering in fear. Leela's parents looked on, their faces etched with worry for their daughter's safety. Be careful, Leela. Her mother called out, her voice trembling. I promise, I'll be okay. Leela replied, trying to sound more confident than she felt. The henchmen sneered at Leela and Merlin, weapons drawn and ready for a fight. But as they advanced, Leela closed her eyes and focused on the power of the enchanted heirloom. With a surge of energy, she unleashed a gust of wind that knocked the henchmen off their feet. One by one, Leela and Merlin fought off the henchmen using a combination of magic and cunning. The villagers watched in awe, rallying behind the courageous duel. The tide seemed to be turning in their favor, but the lead henchman had one last trick up his sleeve. If you don't hand over the pendant, he snarled, we'll burn your village to the ground. Leela hesitated, her heart torn between the safety of her family and the village she called home, and her loyalty to Merlin and Arthur. Merlin, sensing her struggle, placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Leela, this is a difficult choice, but I trust you to make the right decision. With tears in her eyes, Leela looked around at her family and friends, knowing that she couldn't let them suffer at the hands of the henchmen. But she also knew that giving up the pendant would put the fate of the kingdom in jeopardy. At that moment, Leela understood the true nature of her role in the unfolding events. She was destined to help Arthur claim his birthright, and she couldn't let Lord Agravane use the artifact for his own malicious purposes. With newfound resolve, Leela addressed the lead henchman. I will not give you the pendant. And if you threaten my village again, you will regret it? The henchman laughed, but his laughter was short-lived. With a fierce cry, Leela unleashed a torrent of magic from the pendant, sending the henchman fleeing from the village in terror. Though Leela had protected her home and family, she knew that her journey was far from over. With the artifact in her possession, she had a responsibility to ensure it was used for good. And so, with Merlin's guidance and her family's blessing, Leela prepared to embark on the quest to find the rightful heir to the kingdom, and perhaps to discover her own destiny along the way. Chapter 5 The Quest for the Rightful Heir with their bags packed and farewell said, Leela and Merlin set off on their quest to find the rightful heir to the kingdom. The journey would take them through ancient forests, treacherous mountains, and magical realms where time seemed to stand still. As they traveled, Leela and Merlin encountered many magical creatures, both friendly and fearsome. From the wise, talking animals of the enchanted forest to the mischievous sprites that lived among the flowers, Leela found herself in awe of the world she never knew existed. One day, as they made their way through a dense thicket, Leela and Merlin stumbled upon a fearsome dragon, its scales glinting like emeralds in the sunlight. The dragon roared, smoke billowing from its nostrils, and Leela felt her knees go weak with fear. But Merlin, ever the wise wizard, whispered a secret spell into Lilla's ear. With newfound courage, she stepped forward and spoke the spell, her voice clear and strong. 
To her amazement, the dragon's eye softened, and it bowed its head in submission, allowing the duo to pass unharmed. Throughout their journey, Lilith's magical abilities continued to grow, as did her loyalty to Merlin and the rightful heir. She found herself facing tests of courage, wisdom, and heart, each one more challenging than the last. One night, as they sat around a campfire, Leela asked Merlin, How will I know when I'm ready to face Lord Agravain? How can I be sure that I'm strong enough to protect the kingdom and my family? Merlin looked at Leela, his eyes filled with pride. Leela! You have already proven your courage and your loyalty. When the time comes, you will know what to do. Trust in yourself and your abilities, and you will find the strength you need. With Merlin's wise words echoing in her mind, Leela felt a renewed sense of determination. She vowed to continue her journey to help Arthur claim his birthright and to protect the kingdom from the clutches of Lord Agravain. And as the sun set on another day, Leela knew that she was one step closer to fulfilling her destiny. Chapter 6 The Enchanted Tear Loom's Power after a long and arduous journey, Lila and Merlin finally reached the hidden stronghold where the rightful heir, Arthur, had been living in secret. As they approached the entrance, Lila noticed the look of anticipation on Merlin's face. Is he really the one, Merlin? She asked nervously. Merlin smiled and said, Yes, Lila. Arthur is destined to be a great king. You'll see. When they met Arthur, Leela could hardly believe that this young man with a kind smile and gentle demeanor was destined to be a king. But as they talked, she could see the wisdom and strength that lay beneath his humble exterior. As they sat together, Merlin revealed to Arthur the story of the enchanted artifact and its connection to his birthright. Arthur listened intently, his eyes wide with amazement and determination. With the artifact in hand, Leland Merlin and Arthur made their way to the royal palace where the coronation ceremony would take place. As they entered the Grand Hall, the air buzzed with anticipation. Leela could feel the weight of destiny upon her shoulders. As the ceremony began, Leela used the Enchanted Heirloom's power to reveal the truth about Arthur's lineage. A magical light emanated from the artifact, casting a brilliant glow on Arthur. The gathered crowd gasped in awe as they witnessed the undeniable proof that Arthur was indeed the rightful heir to the throne. With Lord Agravain's deception exposed, the people of the kingdom rallied behind their new king. A great battle ensued, with Leela, Merlin, and Arthur leading the charge. The enchanted artifact's magic proved to be a powerful weapon against Agravain's forces, and in the end, Arthur's army emerged victorious. As the dust settled, King Arthur stood before his people, ready to begin his reign. With Leela and Merlin by his side, he vowed to bring peace and prosperity to the kingdom and to ensure that the darkness of Lord Agravain's rule would never return. The people cheered as their new king was crowned, and Leela felt a swell of pride in her heart. She had played a crucial role in fulfilling Arthur's destiny, and she knew that her own journey was far from over. Chapter 7 A New Beginning With King Arthur's coronation, the kingdom entered a new era of peace and prosperity. Leela felt a mixture of pride and relief as she watched her village return to its former tranquility. The people, once fearful and oppressed, now went about their lives with renewed hope and happiness. As Leela returned to her village, she was greeted as a hero. 
The villagers, who once regarded her with skepticism and fear, now celebrated her bravery and the crucial role she played in the kingdom's salvation. Lila's parents embraced her, their eyes filled with tears of joy and gratitude. Lila, my child, you've done us so proud. Her mother said, her voice trembling with emotion. Her father added, You have shown everyone the true power of your magical abilities, and we couldn't be more proud of you. As Leela adjusted to her newfound status, she continued to practice her magical skills, guided by Merlin, who frequently visited the village. Under his tutelage, Leela's abilities flourished and she became a respected member of the community. One day, as Leela and Merlin walked through the village, they spoke of the future and the adventures that lay ahead. Leela, you have proven yourself to be a true guardian of the enchanted artifact and a loyal ally to King Arthur. Merlin said, his eyes twinkling with pride. I foresee many more adventures for you, for Arthur and for the Knights of the Round Table. Leela smiled, her heart swelling with excitement and anticipation. I'm ready for whatever comes my way, Merlin. She declared, her voice full of determination. As long as I have my friends and my magic, I know I can face any challenge. With a promise of future adventures, Leela continued to grow and learn under Merlin's guidance, ready to defend her village, her kingdom, and the people she loved. And so, a new chapter began for Leela, Merlin, Arthur, and the Knights of the Round Table, a chapter filled with courage, friendship, and magic, where the bonds they forged would echo through the ages.